have an implant in it now and they vibrate from time to time and uh, I don't know if anybody else has ever complained about these things vibrating but mine do and I think they put them in a tougher place for me to get to this time and my girls I've got three little children and they draw pictures and they're scary as hell and I'm so afraid and so frightened and so nervous right now to talk to you it's not even funny but I wanted to talk to you guys about this my wife um, she she uh, she complains frequently about being drawn toward the ceiling and being abducted. I think she's the first one that they started to take, and um, she describes these little these little things that come into our bedroom. Not every time, but um, a lot more more frequently than others. The little things come into our room, and that's what take her. And um, she. Um, she describes being taken toward the ceiling, and we've moved from one end of this country to the other. We spent a, a year in South Dakota. She's a Sioux Indian, and we lived on her reservation for a year, and those things are out there, too, and they took us while we were out there. Um, and they're not very nice. They're mean as, mean as hell to us, and they treat my little children like you wouldn't believe, and they leave triangular-shaped marks on their bodies. And the... They look like little brown moles, but then they don't always disappear. And they'll wake up with bruises in a triangular shape in different parts of their bodies, on their arms and their chest. And well, uh, sir, uh, let me ask you a question: If you if you think if you think that you've been abducted and have had uh, implants inserted, have you had any imaging work done? No, um, I have, but I, not specifically for that. Um, but I took something out of my nose, and it was a little clear glass, or it looks like a little glass um, shard. It, it was the the shape of a piece of pencil lead. It just wasn't that big. It wasn't that large in diameter. And I took it. I took it from myself. And after that, there's there's three places on the left side of my body that it feels just like a telephone when it vibrates, and it scares me to death. And and I never know when it's going to happen. Um, I'm standing outside right now on my job, and uh, my wife worked down here with me as well because she couldn't stand it anymore. She swears that they're down here. They come to visit her. Now, what their particular interest is of her over the rest of us, I couldn't tell you. But when they started taking my children, I wanted to wait up on them. Uh, and if I could get a hold of one of my weapons when those things show up, they'll be one to, for somebody to investigate. I can tell you that right now because I'm not. It, I, I can't. I don't know who to talk to. Um, I'm scared to death to mention it to people because everybody will make fun of you. And okay, uh, I know you guys won't. So, where are you located at? I'm uh, Oak Island, North Carolina, on the East Coast. And okay. okay another thing get, we've got down here. You need to get a hold is a, of North Carolina MUFON. Okay. Uh, okay. If you, go, if you go online or if you can't get it, you can email me. I'll get you the address and the person to talk to. They have great okay. investigators down there. And as far as that vibration is concerned. Do you have a magnet? Yes, sir. Take a magnet and run that magnet over that area and let them know if that vibration stopped or started when you did that with the magnet. <laughs> and okay. as far as those marks on your children's bodies, you need to photograph those, preferably preferably with a 35-millimeter camera or, or a good digital camera and get good clear shots and get a hold okay. of the people there at uh, North Carolina MUFON, and they will take care of that and they will help you. Okay. All right. Okay, listen, okay. thank you thank you very, very much for the call. He sounded uh, absolutely uh, honest to me yes. and, uh, and kind of scared. Let's go way up north. Uh, Alberta, Canada brings Gloria. You're on the air, Gloria. Oh, hi there, Art and uh, Butch. Hi. I have a strange experience with an ET. I woke up at dawn, and I'm sitting wide awake on my bed... And on my left is a long gray arm with a hand dangling with very pointy, pointy nails. And I look the other way and think, oh, no. And I look back, and it brought its hand up. And the palm was quite pink, actually, and these long nails. Then it was down to business. It took my left pointer finger in a little saucer and in this saucer were little black specks like coarse black pepper and they went into my finger in an orderly manner then when that was finished it said to me in my head do not look at me 
Then it was my right finger that went in the saucer, and the same thing happened. And when that was finished, they were gone. It was gone. But I know it's been back because it leaves a trademark. I've had scratches on my left palm, and the top one has left a scar, and it was bled on my covers. And the next time, it's on my shoulder, and the scars are there from the sharp, pointy nails. And I wonder if there's anyone else that's had an experience like that. And I was only 75 years old. I was not young, so this is more of a mystery to me. And the next day, it was very scary for me. At the time, I was not afraid. Okay. Um, I've never heard anything like that. Nor have I, but um, this is the kind of thing you get when you open lines and you listen to people. You just get these stories that are just astounding. And, and frankly, you know, the, the lady sounded completely lucid, as did the gentleman before her. I think they were Very lucid, but I mean, if you, if you call 911 or something and you tell a story like this, you know, the people in the white coats are going to show up. Yeah, they'd, they'd, they'd hang up on you for sure. Uh, well, I don't know that they'd hang up on you, but they, you know, I, you'd be in some danger of uh, getting an, an examination, not by aliens, but p people, uh, you know, with degrees. I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Judith in Ohio, hi, you're on the air with Butch and Art Bell. Hi, yes, I am, I am calling you from Ohio. Uh, I'm being shy now. Um <laughs> I listen quite often. I work second shift, and I stay up half the night just so I can hear you guys. Um, uh, I've had a lot of things in my life, and my and my parents have had things, and I've had a strange life. But uh, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about tonight, uh, let's see, it's been many years now because my son was just like seven, and now he's in his 30s, so it's almost 30 years ago. I found a foot. Um, my son and his little friend were sled riding, my sister lived out in the country. I had gone over there to take them sled riding, and there was nobody home. The house was locked, and I was walking in a little grove of trees next to the, where the boys were. Mm. And in the snow was a foot. And the first thing I thought was, like, oh, somebody's killed a deer, and the dogs have drug the bones in. I picked it up, and then I got real scared for a second because I thought it was human. But, the, but I, I didn't have any medical training then, which I have now. But it wasn't a human foot. And even then I thought, well, this isn't made right. Stop and, for a moment and describe what you saw, please. Or okay. Have. Yeah, I sure will. Um, it was, okay, it was like it was fresh bone. It wasn't old. It was fresh. Like you go to the meat market and you get a bone for your dog. Yeah. And it had a little bit of gristle on it. It didn't have any skin or any hair or anything. And it was, there was like one joint where the heel is. Uh, it, the length of the whole thing was maybe 14 inches, 12 to 14 inches long. There was the heel part, and then from the heel, there was like one bone that would come out, clear up to a little joint, and then there was like, there were several of these, not like, like, not, not like two or three, but maybe like, four to six or seven of these. Listen, I'm, I, I've got to break this. I'm going to ask you to hold on through the break. Can you afford to do that? Oh, sure. All right. We're coming up to a break, so stay right where you are. Butch, stay where you are from Manila in the Philippines. I'm Art Bell, and we'll be right back. I can feel it. 